30th. Good morning, Chandler. Hey, guys. How's everyone going today? Everyone doing, going, I don't know. How's everybody going? You're off to a blazing start. Blazing start for me. Nate behind the window. Good morning, Nate. Thank you for getting it started with the goat scream. Uh, Nate just walked in here a few minutes ago holding a cup of, I believe, coffee. We hope. Maybe. It's a thermos of something. Uh, Undisclosed liquid. (laughs) I don't share all my secrets. Thank goodness you don't. It's Paulo Costa's secret juice. I'm not on video, guys. You guys are. Good Good morning to you all. If you want to catch us on YouTube, you can go to Sacktown Sports 1140's YouTube channel. You can see us there. You can also go to True Sports Cards YouTube channel. Follow us there. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow us there. Also, we are on Instagram. I need to bump up my follower count. So uh, go to True Sports Cards. One word. No no underscores. We locked that up. True Sports Cards. Good for you. Sorry. Oh, and we also have a new Instagram. True Galleria. T-R-U-E Galleria. So that's one for our uh, Roseville Galleria shop. True Galleria. That's right. Double IGs. Look They're at you. Double you, IGs. You know who keeps popping up on my recommendations on Instagram? Let's let's pause for a second. Let's really rethink what you're about to say before you say who pops up on your Instagram. Beckett. My son. Your son. Yes. That kid posts way too much. Yeah. What is up with that? Like, dude, that dude. He's up. We get it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's crawling. <laughs> for, we get it. For, um, a, for all he's running now. Uh, for a 19 month old, that kid posts way too much. I'm like, yeah. dude, stop sharing. Uh-huh. Stop sharing. Well, good morning to you all. I hope you're having a great week. Um, I'll tell you who was not having a great week was Kevin Herter. Nope. As I mentioned on the Carmichael Dave show on Tuesday, I was on. And uh, unfortunately, Kevin Herter of the Sacramento Kings had season ending surgery or is about to have season ending surgery on his torn labrum that he injured while playing against the Grizzlies, Desmond Bain with the swipe, which ended up hitting his arm, which ended up dislocating his shoulder, which ended up tearing his labrum. Yeah. And so our autograph signing that was scheduled for today, if you were planning on coming out to it, I, I informed everybody that had a ticket via email or phone call on Wednesday and Thursday that today's signing would be postponed, if not canceled altogether. And um, so if you are planning on going to the gallery today, to get an autograph by Kevin Herter today is not the day that's going to happen. Now I talked to Kevin's agent a couple of uh, days ago before the announcement of him getting surgery. I had already known that he was going to surgery, but I had, I couldn't say anything obviously because yeah. it's breaking news and it's not my spot to say it. It was my spot to tell people that he wasn't going to be there. Um, so we are trying to have him come to the May autograph expo that we'll have. Um, May 17th through 19th. So we'll do what we can about getting confirmation that he'll be able to be there. But I am aware that he is going to be doing his rehab here in Sacramento area mm-hmm. and he's not going to be flying back home to New York. He's going to be doing it here for the most part. So um, speedy recovery, Kevin. I yeah. mean, we're feeling the results from not having a Kevin Herter. No matter how you felt about his shooting this year, yes, he is down about five points from where he was last year. Mm-hmm. His shooting percentage is down. He was going through slumps here and there. Um, but defensively or just another body, we are, you know, in a position to where we're as a Kings organization, not thrilled about the bench. No. And we were talking about that pre pre show. Emil, t- let's talk about last night's loss. Yeah. Um, yet another one that was, I think we, uh, lost it in the clutches of a win or whatever, the, however the description is yeah i mean it was ours to lose you know going into the fourth quarter up 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 10 it felt like for a good portion of that and yet you know when it comes down to it you're not hitting your clutch shots you're you're committing costly turnovers there was there was one play in particular where kessler edwards and keon couldn't you know figure out the handoff and they're they're jogging back giggling about oh my, my bad my bad not the greatest look when you end up blowing that game and kyrie irving comes back and does kyrie irving things and it's unfortunate now because the kings are now theoretically going to be in the play. And it looks like with Dallas having a good foothold on the six, on the six seed. We've got nine games left. Yeah. About nine games left. And currently Dallas is 44, 29 Kings are 42 and 31. They are two games out of the six seed now. And you want to get that seven, obviously that seven, eight, if we are the plan, you want to have the first game be a home game, but not ideal for a team who's, who's already down Kevin Herter and now went down Malik Monk. Do me a favor, Emil. If you could pull up the Kings schedule remaining for the, next nine games. I'm going to be at the game tomorrow uh, versus the jazz. These are critical games for the Kings to be winning in order for us to be 
uh, position. You have the I schedule do. up. Yeah. Yes. Do any Lakers or I know we're done with Dallas. Any of the uh, plan or or um, Rockets games? Uh, we do. We have a game against the Suns, second to last. Okay. Uh, Friday, April twelfth. Uh, it it is going to be at um Golden One Center. It will be here in Sacramento. Pivotal, pivotal game that one will be. Okay. Any other Lakers games or Warriors games? Lakers and Warriors, no, but we do have the Clippers after the Jazz um, as well against in terms of Western Conference teams. It's, 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 it's a tough slate. we got the Thunder still. we got the Pelicans still. we got the Celtics on the other side. It's going to be an East Coast trip um, with the Knicks as well. I mean, we got a couple tough games coming up, and so it's going to be a really tough stretch down the run here. Hopefully we can secure that, that play-in, but it's going to be hard to do without two pivotal players potentially. Yep, that's what. That's what uh, Tay says in the YouTube chat. He says too many turvo- turnovers. That is correct. Now Malik Monk went down last night too. Yeah, and that's our guy. He's been playing a little off lately. I wouldn't say bad, not at all, but he's been a little off, a little slumped the last uh, couple games. Yeah, and I didn't get to see the game at the beginning. I was doing some stuff at the shop last night, and the game starts right around when we're closing up shop. So I'm kind of closing up the shop, and then Pete, who is uh, one of our team members screams out oh man monk and i was like what's going on yeah seeing luca falling on his leg um any word on what's going on with monk yet yeah it's uh, revealed i believe by sham serrani of the athletic it's a sprained mcl which as we know trey lyles is also dealing with a sprained mcl and has been out since since uh i believe march 12th if i'm correct if not the dates are off on that one but he's been out for an extended period of time so hoping for the best with malik monk hoping it's a minor sprain i heard he was in good spirits last night uh, but that's still another injury knock to, to look at with this roster. It's already devoid of, of bench depth with, with Herter out. CBS Sports is saying Monk is feared to have a suffered a strained, a sprained yep. MCL. Yep. And um, they're describing a serious knee injury suspected. So here we are. Yeah. We're now again at a position to where the Kings, and I think this exposes a really weak bench. It does. I'm looking at it right now. And when you move Keon into the starting lineup, in case of, uh, because of Herder, you got a really weak bench. You got Davion, Len, Kessler, Kessler Edwards. I mean, it's just not not a thrilling bench for sure. So I had made a suggestion. Emil and I were talking pre-show, and I said, move Keon out of the starting lineup and into the Monk role. Bring Kessler Edwards into the starting lineup, so that way the Kings. I mean, you have four scorers or potential scorers for the Kings. With Kessler Edwards, you don't have to worry about him scoring. And then you can bring Keon off the bench for energy and that monk role of being able to score some points on the way in. Yeah, and they need that spark plug off the bench in that six, man. That's what Monk was so great. I know he didn't like coming off the bench. Obviously, we had that that Anthony Slater interview, but Monk was such a pivotal part of that bench group. And, you know, giving that spark off the bench thing, becoming the closer. Keon being put into that role does make sense. I do like the suggestion. I just worry a little bit about Kessler Edwards and that last night his three-pointing was a little bit of a mirage. I'm hoping that it was oh, not. He's not going to be like that, but... I'm just hopeful that he can hit two a game. That's really... Can you can you just hit the open threes, please? I'd rather him stop two a game. You know what I mean? It's the same, it's the same plus we, minus. We, we know what he brings defensively. He needs to be able to not be the left open guy that they don't... Like, like exa- for example, they, we left Dante Exum open three times last night in a row. He missed the first two, but hit the third one, which was the clutch three. Can you can you hit the one that matters the most? Is that, that's what I'm asking with Kessler. Sabonis, 36 minutes. Barnes, 40. Murray, 35. Jaron Fox, 40. These guys are barely coming out. They're exhausted at the end of the game because the bench is so weak. You had Monk with one minute. Dorte yeah, with man. seven. Kessler with 11. Len with 12. Mitchell with 19. I don't know why Mike Brown is not playing JaVale. JaVale needs some minutes to kind of offset. It's like a Tom Thibodeau team right now. I don't know what. I don't know what's just going on. Running all it's the just, minutes up. It's really frustrating to watch this team. 107, 103, Mavericks beat the Kings last night. How does this affect the market? Well, I'll tell you that it doesn't affect the high end market. Pete, again, who uh, works at our shop, yeah. purchased a, um, excuse me, a Darren Fox 2017 Prism gold card. This rookie. Rookie. And it was uh, graded by Beckett with a grade of 8.5. So the subgrades were 8.5 on three of them. And with the surface, it got a 10. So it's not my business to tell you what Pete paid for it, but I will tell you that Pete bought it less than two, three weeks ago, mm-hmm. took it to the Burbank show, I believe, or where was it? No, he took it to the San Francisco show mm-hmm. to get it graded on a rush. It came back 
And he sold it last night. He sold it last night for, and I have permission to tell you, sold that gold card numbered out of 10 BGS 8.5 for $8,000. And uh, it was a nice profit. And that doesn't, you know, current games aside, when you have a an iconic card like a gold prism yeah. numbered out of 10 and you have it of the franchise player uh, in the city that you are in, it's going to sell and it's sold locally and very happy for Pete and very happy for the new owner of this card. The buyer. Yeah, yep, absolutely. It's a, it's a big pull and I'm really one, happy for one them. of a kind car. Well, one of 10 card, I should say, but it's still a, a amazing grail card to have for any Kings collector and shout out to the buyer as well. Yep. And you said that there's the one one. There is, I believe the one-on-one is out there on eBay. I believe I have it on my watch list. I think it's listed for about 40K. So that, that price of eight is about right for, yep. for a card like that. There you go. Okay, so we know that Herder is out. We know that the Kings are in the play-in mix uh, with the exception of the Houston Rockets. Everybody else in the Western Conference is out. So unless the Kings really, really, really tumble, they're likely to be in the play-in unless they lose a bunch and then they get bounced and the Rockets continue winning. They're now 11 wins in a row. Hottest team in March. Yep. Unbelievable what the Rockets are doing. The fearful team right now should be the Warriors. Mm -hmm. Draymond is likely to be suspended one more time for maybe a game. Uh, we sure? Yeah. We sure? Uh, well, I don't know how many technicals he has. I think the only reason he hasn't gone through the technicals threshold is because he's been suspended so long from the previous ones nice. that he didn't have enough games to do technicals. It was so... It was so bizarre. That moment was so bizarre this week. And watching Curry just exasperated. Just, just be like, start oh, crying. Yeah. I mean, I've never he seen crying, it. Right? He was actually crying. Yeah. And then Draymond gave us the villain meme, which is great, uh, where he's hugging Curry and smiling menacingly at the camera for some reason after the game. <coughs> um, Draymond, Draymond, he's just, he's Draymond. That's all I got. That's all I got with Draymond. When you have to say it's Draymond being Draymond or it's this person's name being that person's name, that's a problem. Just sucks. It's, I don't know. I, I call him Alcatraz Green. It's okay. What's that mean? Because he, you know, stop, puts people in, you know, he stomped out Sabonis and he needs to go to Alcatraz because he needs to serve <laughs> sentences. I don't know. If I were you, collectors, I'm not a, you should buy this and you should sell that. Uh oh. But I'll give you some, t today's episode, today's radio show is really going to feature a lot of like, what should you do with some of this stuff? And mm, as a, Card shop owner, obviously, I put myself in a position to where I'm like, oh great, I have to, I have to shill everything by saying that this guy's the greatest thing since sliced bread, yeah. so that way I can sell all of his cards. Sometimes you just got to face the truth. Here's where we're at. I think that this is the last stand, the last dance version of the Warriors that they're made, the way they're the Dynasty Warriors. Yep. Yeah, I don't think Clay comes back. No. I I think Clay is going to say, pay me my money. I've done so much. I've sacrificed so much. And he's going to want probably somewhere in the 35 to 40 million year. He wants range. Draymond's contract. Yep. And Lacob was the owner of the Warriors. Joe Lacob was fine with paying that as they were continually being a perennial championship contender team. I mean, they won two years ago. So it's like, yeah. they're not too far off, but the team is old. Um, they don't have the roster, that middle aged, you know, mid twenties roster. Yeah. Uh, to get them past this hump. Clay is not as good as he used to be. Paul is, I even forgot he was on the team until I just said it. Well, he's been out for a long time. Yeah, so yeah. just, you know, Paul is going to be. He's the six man. He's the, the veteran you know, point guard. He's still, he's still Chris Paul. He still has that knack to him. Making 40 million a year, averaging eight points a game and seven assists. I and, get it. It's still, it's right. old man Chris Paul. And then if, if you take away Curry, what is the draw of signing there sure it's the legacy etc but like cap space just isn't like it used to be to where it's like well if we free up some cap space we'll pay for somebody else like the players are very very in tune with where they want to play now yes. and who they want to play with yeah and people i mean there's been multiple times that people want to play with lebron and they take massive haircuts financially they go play with lebron and then he talks about how they need to trade and get better players like the angela why russell did, why did i sign yeah. with you man you make me feel yeah. like crap that i Signed with you. I took a haircut to play with you. And now you're talking about how we need to better the roster. So I think people are not drawn to specific team members like they th like they used to be. Yeah. You know, like who wants to play with Le LeBron right now? Really? 
mean, he's 38. He's angling to play with his son. He's probably going to put you on blast. He's, he's angling he, to own a team in Vegas. That's what he's really he angling for. He will. Own that he team. will. And so we're, we're really kind of just thinking about like, what does this mean for the Warriors? So with that said, I think it's time to sell your Clay Thompson's. If you can unload them, I would, I would sell your Clay Thompson's. Mm -hmm. I think that Curry is at that goat status level. I think he's probably top 13, all, 14 all time. All time. Yeah. He, he's the greatest shooter ever. Pro, but I'm saying like just overall, some I think people have Curry in the top people. Some people have Curry in the top five. Oh like, no. Like, like they're just, I'm just, there's, I know there, there's a, there's a variance. I've had this discussion oh, with a lot no. of other people about certain players. That's just recency bias. People being a little bit too. Excited. I mean, how many players though you could say revolutionized the game of basketball. And that's what Curry Ten. stands. For. Exactly. 10. That's probably. why I have him in the tennis range. Chamberlain, Mike in Le LeBron, Jordan, Jordan, Curry, Curry, 100% revolutionized Dr. The game J of through the seventies. Yeah. But yeah. those are the guys we're talking about. So yeah. the, the echelon Dirk. of variants of five to 13, that, that range though of all time greats makes sense. So I think Curry has now moved into mutual funds. I always describe them in the state of like a stock. Yes. I think that Curry is now mutual funds. Mm -hmm. He can't, he can do no wrong at this point, no matter what happens. If he never wins another um, championship, he'll be fine. His legacy is established. That's yeah, established. And for those that have been asking for Curry, Rook, Curry autograph cards, it's really interesting because um, one of the most underpriced assets in sports cards is leaf cards. Yes. And I'm not joking. I'm yes. being dead serious. We sold a Curry leaf autograph product. It was him and Chris Mullen. There were sticker autos on a card oh. and they were numbered to like 10. Mm -hmm. I sold it for $350. That's cheap. So it's cheap in relation to the Curry market. If Correct. you were to get a Panini uh, autograph Curry card, you'd be paying upwards of $800 or so. Oh, yeah. So you can get, I like to call it mispriced asset. I think that, or underpriced asset. I think that Leaf really has done a good job as far as getting affordable autographs of players that are genuinely authentic mm -hmm. out in the world. Here's an interesting video that you may want to watch on YouTube. There's a video by Card Collector 2, yeah. Ryan, who um, went to the Leaf factory to show where they package their Leaf cards. Have oh, you seen this? I have not. Oh, it's awesome. So he goes there and he kind of goes with, I want VP or president or whoever it is of leaf. Sure. And they're walking around and they're walking around the facility and you, and it's not what you think it is. It's literally like a big warehouse empty with lots of plastic folding tables. I'm not joking. Interesting. Okay. So what happens is every box is hand collated, meaning that every box that leaf makes, whether it's pro set, whether it's leaf, whether it's Trinity, any of their sub products, mm -hmm. There's a human who loads that particular box oh. and then seals it. So what happens is, is that you look and you're not going to get skunked like a panini box with, I, I, I use this and uh, I apologize to the customer that came into my shop that opened this box, but they opened a box of 2022 yeah. hobby prism football. Oh, it's boy. like nine hundred and fifty dollars oh, for the box. Oh boy! And he, the two autos were Rex Ryan and Panini points. And I had to hug the guy. Like I'm so sorry, man. This doesn't happen in Leaf because what they were do, what they're doing is they're loading the boxes up and saying, "All right, let's put the Curry auto here, but we'll give them slightly less value in the mem." Yeah. Or you know what? This is a one on one Barry Sanders mem game used. Let's put that in there, but let's go light on the auto. So it kind of. They, they scale it to yes. where you feel like you're getting value in the box, no matter what, based on that price point. And that's appreciated as the collector. For sure. As a collector, it is. For sure. So if you're out there, give it a look. Take a look and see the Card Collector 2's video on YouTube about going to the Leaf factory to see what that looks like. They had like a, a box. It was like a 3,200 count box of Leaf signed messy Auto. Oh. Autos with fat jersey patches, nice. and all the patches were game used. Sick. And they're loading those boxes up in the Trinity Soccer. That's they're so putting cool. a Messi here, and then they'll have a Holland um, jersey card, and then they'll have a Paley signature on this one, and they'll have a Messi jersey only in this one. So they loaded that thing up in the sense of really like mm -hmm. having equitable boxes instead of just overloading the heck out of one. So what you're saying is that Leaf is the go-to. <laughs> I would say that. <laughs> I'm saying if you want affordable options um, and you want a Curry Auto, Leaf is the way to go.
Uh, the rest of the Warriors there, I think, what's our guy's name? Brandon what? Pajemski. Pajemski. He's fairly hot. He sells pretty well in our store, in our shop. The big one right now, though, is Kaminga. I would agree. Kaminga's selling really well right now. Kaminga's really had a nice four, fourth year leap. Fourth mm -hmm. year, yeah. Yeah. Well, he's the same year as... Uh, okay, th third year. Third year. Yeah, third year. Really nice third year leap, as well as Trace Jackson Davis also playing really well. So they have some nice rookies as well, some nice younger players to go into the next phase of Warriors basketball. And again, they're trying to area the two the two sides, and it hasn't really worked out for them. So we'll see what happens this offseason. Well, I will tell you that uh, that leads to a couple of things that we got going on as far as new product that has come out or is about to come out. So this past week, we had a few things come out. Yesterday, I got a got a case of 23-24 uh, Panini Prism Fast Break. Oh, that's the like the light version of the hobby boxes. Yeah, as we know, Wemby is as hot as can be. We're going to stay talking basketball here for a few minutes. Hotter than fish grease. We're going to talk on the backside of this show about baseball. So let's let's finish our conversation in regards to basketball. So with basketball, we've uh, seen this uh, fast break come out. Let me see what the price is on that. Dead air. Nothing like dead air. Nothing like dead air. Go ahead, Emil. You, can you give that a look? And I got us? it right okay, now. Okay, what do you got for price? I don't. I haven't put it on the shelf yet. So. You haven't even put it on the shelf. No, yet? we just got it yesterday. Okay. So I, I okay. I want to say it's like five twenty five a box. Yeah, it's about it's about that. Yes. About five twenty five bucks. Yeah. Is it one guaranteed auto? Uh yes. What yes, else is, is in that? Yes. I'm just scrolling through it right now because I'm looking at the original. Um, I believe one guaranteed auto, twelve, I believe par uh prism parallels, as well as a couple numbered cards as well. I don't know the exact number on okay. the numbered, but it varies per box. For those of you that wanted to have an idea of getting some options at Prism. And trying to get a Wemby. This is about a half price option right now. The boxes of of uh, Prism Hobby basketball are going for about eleven hundred dollars, and um, I just I really like an option that's an affordable option for them. I also loaded up. I have twenty eight mega boxes Ooh. of Prism sitting at my store <sighs> and ready for them to purchase. They've been flying off the shelves because they're just under a hundred bucks. And I've seen a couple of hot boxes actually. Yeah. So there's that. We have blasters. Um, those of you that haven't come by the shop, I just want to share with you. We've kind of revamped the way that it looks. So we moved a lot of our memorabilia over to the mall, to our Galleria shop. And so we have a lot of mem over there. But what we did was when we removed the mem, we had an entire wall that was empty. So what we decided to do, our manager, Shep, who's usually on the show, we racked up a lot of the retail products. So blasters, megas, uh, that kind of stuff is on our wall. So we have hobby on one side, meaning all the more expensive, high risk, high reward boxes. And then on the other side, we have low risk, low reward, but an affordable option for those that want to get into some of the products like Prism or um, Illusion. I like, like that. that though. Yeah. And what we've noticed is that we have a lot of people now being able to come in and say, oh, $1,100 for a box of hobby Prism basketball. This is crazy. It's crazy. But over here, around 50 bucks or so, I can get a blaster box of Prism and still have a fun chance of getting it's it. Still, so It's about ripping. It's still a fun rip, I right? It. Yeah. I want to be able to do that. Yeah. So that option came in. We also have a lot of Illusions football. Illusions football came out in the last seven days. Um, I want to. I don't have that pricing in front of me. I probably should have that kind of stuff. Uh, but Illusions football is an option. We also have that in Megas and in Blasters. That just came out as well. All right. What is on the horizon? This week coming up, first of all, the shop will be closed tomorrow for Easter. Happy Easter to those of you that celebrate. Uh, we'll be taking the day off both at the sh both locations, the mall as well as the regular card shop. You're giving Pete a day off? Uh, no, Pete's working, but oh, the shop will be closed. I see. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, both locations will be closed. I believe the entire mall will be closed too. Yeah. And um, on Monday when we return – the releases really start happening on Wednesday the third. It's a big April. Yeah, huge April. It's a big April. An expensive April for me. For um, me too. Yeah. So let's look and see what's coming out. One of the big releases of the year for football is Immaculate Football it. Hobby. Yeah. Uh, right around fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars a box. I mean, I'll go through some of the details, please. Yeah. Inside the box, first of configuration, it is one pack per box, six cards total. So very much risky for the biscuit. 
Uh, five autos or mem, one base or parallel card. That is what's inside of the box. Obviously, the big, big hits inside of Immaculate are massive, including dual NFL shields, Hall of Fame jerseys, and rookie logos. So with that said, the hot person that you wanted at 23 is who? CJ Stroud. That's correct. And you're going to get how many autos of CJ Stroud as a possibility? Five autos or mem. Zero. It's Zero. CJ Stroud. Good fact. <laughs> I, I, I just failed the task right there. Although, you know, CJ Stroud's going to be hot no matter what yeah. uh, formation of. Uh, it's not even a. It's an RP, How, not RPA. However, the NFL Shield one of one for Stroud, that's going to be hot. Still there. Yeah. It'll be an immaculate. I believe there should be one in flaws, flawless as well. Mm-hmm. Hot product. You still have Anthony Richardson as a possibility for the signatures. A Rich's market's crazy it's right nuts. now. Yeah. Crazy. We watched a Anthony Richardson uh, PSA 10 downtown that we had. Yeah. Was, we had it in our case for 1350 And then a comp came out for 1600 just a couple days ago. So we were like, oh, we better change this. I saw, price. I saw one self even more. Yeah. It's, 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 my market's crazy, and I get it. A Rich has had a really solid, you know, rookie season before he got hurt, and then now he comes into year two. Really likable guy too. Strangely enough, why does a product, uh, why does a player go up in value? Sometimes the circumstances around him. Garner Minshew signs with the Raiders. He was the starter after Anthony went down last year. Yeah, played very well. Brought them to the brink of the playoffs or just into the playoffs. Very close to the playoffs. Yep. And so, when you have a guy that was pushing your job, now go somewhere else. And then you end up with somebody that's a for sure backup. Joe is Flacco. Back, is it Flacco is the backup? Yeah. Poor Flacco. Just go back to the couch. No. Maybe what do you it. mean? You, but, I get paid millions of dollars to be a backup. That's, awesome. That's where, um, yeah, it's for easy for me to say. It's not my million. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. You think about this. It's like, that's where Colts quarterbacks are where you go to die. right before you <laughs> get into the retirement home. Where they get shot. Matt Ryan. <laughs> Carson Wentz. Uh, who else? Oh, now it's Flacco. Flacco. We thought Gardner could be one of them, but Gardner. Philip Rivers was supposed to be there. Philip Rivers. Sam Ellinger. Yeah. He's still there somehow. Hey, Colin Kaepernick, you still have a chance. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so careful now. So we've got that product. The next product I want to talk about is 2023 Panini Impeccable WWE Wrestling. Wrestling? I love it. I, As everybody knows, and I've spent many a minutes on this show. I love my wrestling. Did you watch any of last night's episode of SmackDown? I missed it. Oh, Jade Cargill looked. Oh, you know, I unbelievable. I, I, did, I did see her her promo. Um, she came into the ring talking about how we have the best roster in the in the WWE for as far as women, but yeah, but they're not her. Yeah, and yeah. a storm is coming. A storm is coming. And then she came out to help Naomi. And and, and I didn't see that and, part. Oh yeah, at the end, at the end, Damage Control was was attacking Bianca. Be- a Bel Air after Bianca pinned, I believe it was uh, Kyrie Sane, and they attacked her afterwards. Naomi came out, then they got ambushed by all three. Then Jade came out, and you know how usually they they run to the ring to help out. Jade came out and just walked. She just stared at them and just walked with the slowest pace possible. Walked in, super super kicked uh, Oscar, and then power bombed Dakota Kai to infinity and looked like superhero. She really looked like a superhero. So Jade Cargill, one to watch in products in the future as For well. Sure. And we all know that. Those of you that watched, I think we've gone down to about one tenth the uh, the audience because we're talking about wrestling. But let's no, stick with let's stick with I'm it. I'm gonna keep talking wrestling. Let's, I will tell you that it's pretty clear that Bailey's gonna win. Yeah, Bailey's Bailey is going to win the to. championship against Io Sky. Mm-hmm. Io Sky has been a lame duck uh, champion. Uh, what what I hate about some of these wrestling storylines is that the champion that's a heel always ends up like having to cheat their way to win. Yeah. It just, dude, just everything's a dusty finish as can, they call it. Can we just win fairly? Yeah. One square? Let, that's my big issue like, with Roman Reigns. Just, yeah, just win. It's my big issue with Roman. Like, that's why I like Gunter a lot because he actually is a heel champion for the Intercontinental Champion, but wins fair and square one-on-one because he is that guy. Who's this? Gunter? Gunter? Yes, he is. He's awesome. And he's like, I'll take you on. No he problem. has remade the, the Intercontinental Championship from being irrelevant to relevant again. Well, you can tell he's going to lose, too. Yes. He's, he's going to lose because he's going to be going into the um, championship picture. In the heavyweight or yeah, into, yeah. The, the, the real the real belts. Um, although the Intercontinental belt, who's he fighting? Sami Zayn? Yes. Who's been, they really mishandled his 
storyline after lines. the bloodline stuff he's oh, been man. a little he's over so the place yeah. yeah so wrestling impeccable wrestling what do you get for a thousand bucks yeah Daniel? for a thousand bucks it is again one pack per box nine cards per pack so risk it for the biscuit but Five autos. <laughs> You're well, gonna say that in every box, aren't you? Not every every box that has one pack in it is very much risky for the because you could get skunked. We just talked about this with Panini and Leaf. You can get skunked. I've gotten skunked. Other people have gotten skunked. It happens. Five autos, one unique insert. That's actually the correct term. One unique insert, three base or parallels, uh, in your nine cards per pack per box. But five autos is nice. On card autos, I should say. Lamb says that. JBL versus John Cena in WrestleMania 21 was one of his go-tos. Nice. I love that. Nice, 10. Appreciate um, you, 10. So I just love my wrestling. I think it's a great product. Um, it's probably, I think it's the highest product that's out there. I'm trying to think if there's anything above that. I it's think it's beautiful. Impactful. And if you like metal cards, this is the product for you. They have really thick cards on they, this they, stuff. They do. Get you 130 top, get you 130, 155 top loaders going. Oh, yeah. Let's go back to basketball 23, 24 Origins basketball, roughly about $400 a box. Mm -hmm. Mill, you have that up? Yes. Tell us about Origins basketball. Seven cards per pack, one pack per box. I'm not going to say it again this time. Uh, one, it's not that risky. Well, hey, look, anytime it's one pack, it's risky. Okay. Just saying Fair. it's, it's, it gets risky, it gets dicey. Uh, one auto, one other auto or mem. Two parallels and one insert. That's that's the breakdown on uh, Origins basketball for this year. And Origins is a well, how do you describe Origins? I like it because it's usually on card autos. Yes, um, they're hard to grade because again, any time that the player actually has to physically hold the card in order to sign it, mm -hmm. there's always a risk of quality control because you don't know. If the handler that's there with the player mm -hmm. is caring for the cards as much as you would want to have it cared for as a end customer. We all saw the Tom Brady slide. Ugh. What's worse is watch the Lawrence Taylor slide on flawless. Oh, that's bad. He was yeah. at a signing in um, Chicago at the Sports Spectacular. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times while they're there, Panini will send the products to their agent to say, okay, get this done while you're there with Lawrence Taylor in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Legit, man. It was on a wood table. Oh. Not like a wood table, like smooth. Like one of those jagged ones that you pull out of catering. Like a, like a park bench? That's like, like a balsa wood put oh. to it, right? No cover. No on mat. There. No mat. No nothing. Oh, Idiot. Man. And then LT is sitting there signing the stuff and just sliding it over this balsa wood table. And I'm mm. like, dude. SGC three, SGC four, four. PSA one, one. Uh, definitely like <laughs> oh, this is gosh. terrible. And then people get stuff graded and go, but I just pull it out of the pack. I was like, yeah, after, after, um, Lawrence Taylor and his agent used it as a cheese grater. Yeah, I know. What did you expect it to be like? Ugh. So, oh, don't get me started. <laughs> I said, let's not be on soap boxes. And then I just went on one. I know. Origins basketball, if you can get them, they usually have a darker border. It's full bleed edges to the back mm -hmm. before you get anything graded. Even if it came straight from the pack with your uh, hands in latex gloves, take a look at the back. Yep. Make sure that you don't see any chipping before you send it off and then complain that. With the bright light, make sure you really look at that stuff because it gets it. a little weird with surface. So Here's the final one that we'll talk about. It's 2023 20, 24 Revolutions Basketball, which Emil has a real problem with. I have a problem with the price, but this is actually an OG. Pro it's because I love it. it Two, this is the first high box I ever bought. $250 a box. Emil, tell us the breakdown. Yeah, $200 a box. Uh, $250. $250. I don't want to short it by 20%. $250. Uh, eight packs per box, five cards per pack. And the real kicker here in the box break four rookies, four inserts, eight parallels, no. Guaranteed auto. Is that bad? Yes. <laughs> yes. For the price point, yes. Now, they have a lot of other stuff like Cosmic, these subsets within Galactic, Galactic, Lava. There's a bunch of like numbered versions of the cards. Toledo and, 101s are beautiful. Yeah. They're, I'll tell you, the cards look awesome. They have some sort of like Galactic design. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Some have stars, a lot of foil, a lot of shiny. Yep. Um, they grade fairly well. Yeah, um, they have two new things this year: the the new Re revolutionary insert, which is a super supposed to be a super short print, as well as the short print rookie variation short print insert. So a, a variation on the actual rookie cards are doing a variation this year too. 
Last year it was a hundred and nine dollars. How come it's one two fifty? Well, there's a dude named Victor who is absolutely crushing it. When banana, when banana last night went for forty and twenty, and then threw Jalen Brunson's game ball into the crowd. Is like, that what happened? Yeah, he had sixty one <laughs> points. They still won the game. And Victor threw that thing into the crowd and said, "Nope, you're not getting it." Is that what happened? I thought he was just excited. Maybe he was just excited, but he still threw the game ball into the crowd. Bro, okay, so we were just talking about this. Who has been out there that's received hype that's actually exceeded the hype? I'm thinking about this. Nate's in the window. I don't know if he was listening or not. I'd love for him to chime in if he has an idea. Anybody who has lived up to past the hype, and this dude had massive hype before it. Maybe LeBron? LeBron. I mean, LeBron was, since he was a sophomore in high school, had huge hype. He was already on Sports Illustrated cover before he was even drafted. Peyton Manning. Would you say Peyton Manning had the hype? I mean, number one. That exceeded it? Yeah, I'd say He struggled that first year, too. What a weird pick. That's interesting that you picked that. Not that it's wrong. I'm just. Well, I I was just thinking of top picks, like high draft guys who ended up playing amazing. Anthony Edwards? You say he exceeded the hype? No, I think he, I think he hit it. Okay. I think he hit it. I just, Wemby's like on an insane level. Yeah. 40 and 20, and he's barely turned 20 years old in January. Like, this yeah. guy's unbelievable. I mean, LeBron definitely exceeded uh, Yeah, hype. LeBron. Yeah. Otani yeah. hit, I think Otani hit um, the hype. I don't, I mean, two MVPs is tough to say that he didn't exceed it, but like his injuries is what caused him to not be able to really go through a stratosphere. Correct. Yeah. Well, that and what's going on right now. Any other football players? I'm trying to think. I mean, not really. It's it's I'm Lawrence. This, no, this that, guy is Lawrence. like the. No, he is like the one of the safest bets I would say right now in terms of investing. When I was watching the highlights last night of Brunson scoring his 61, and he was just balling, right? Balling. But then you were watching the them staying shot for shot with him, and you see Wemby. He hit a bottom of the screen corner three. Okay, he's <laughs> seven foot four. Seven foot four hitting in three pointers. He did a pull up three uh, at the top of the key. Like, what is? What are we watching here? Very rarely do you have a player who every single game has three to five. Did that just happen? Moments and Wemby does it like every single game where it's like, did he just do that? Like he he was able to extend his arm like Jordan and space jam and dunk from the free throw line on, on a, on a drive and kick through three players. Maybe, maybe that million dollar offer on that one of one Ooh. PSA 10 was low. It was. I, I can't believe I'm saying that two weeks later, but watching this guy is unbelievable if i was again i'm holding all of Wembenyama stock unless i get an outrageous offer that's just how confident i am in this guy it's not again i don't know if you've listened to i know me and you are fans of the ringer i don't know if you listen, listen to ryan russillo's interview with sean elliott the, the spurs and the, the spurs announcer but I did not he, he was talking about Wemby and when they first kind of met him and he goes he's literally a 35 year old in a 19 year old body mm-hmm. he the way he thinks and approaches basketball is so different than everyone else they meet he's so professional at such a young age and not only that He's so competitive. Mm-hmm. He wants to wreck people. He wants yeah. to wreck the league. We have, obviously that Rudy Gobert quote. This guy wants to be the face of the NBA and is ready for it, up for the challenge. And it's it's really astonishing to see it. I just can't think of any. I'm I'm in here racking watching my racking brain. brain. I just can't think of anyone. But you guys are always talking about with that million dollar card, how volatile this market is. You know how how just spikes up and down crazy. So I think two weeks for a. Uh, a million million dollar card to go up to like I don't know 1.1 1.2 yeah is like I mean that's a 20 percent potentially like right now if you were to ask for the, for a sale on the card if you were the owner which I don't know who the owner is but it's not like it's hidden he was on the YouTube videos when yeah. they were at PSA. You don't know him personally yeah. I don't know him personally but I'm saying like if he turned down a million dollar offer rumored and then all of a sudden a 40 20 game comes in and they won like today's a good day to ask for a Hey, how about 1.3? 1.5 is the lowest I'd go. Really? Honestly. It's a PSA 10. It's perfect. The the card got graded a perfect grade. Whether you agree with it or not, PSA saw that card and graded a PSA 10. Yeah. That card is perfect. Yeah, it's never leaving that house. No. Um. Anyway, so the reason I brought that up is because 2324 product is going to continue to do well. And there's a... Um, 
the second banana in this whole thing behind the Wem banana um, is actually shaping up to be Amen Thompson. Yeah, man. We went through these numbers earlier. This guy's balling. He's six foot seven, playing for the Rockets. They've now won eleven in a row, and he's balling. He scored eighteen with fourteen rebounds yesterday. The game before, he had fifteen rebounds and twenty something points. Twenty five points. He I mean, can't shoot at all yet. He's fourteen cool. percent from three. Is that good? No, okay. that's horrible. That's better than my. He doesn't take threes, and yet school. he's still effective. Not only, and it comes back to, are you a good stats, bad team guy? No, no, he's making winning plays on both ends of the court as a rookie, and that means a lot to me. Very DeMar DeRozan sounds like scoring a lot of twos. He's faster than line. DeRozan. He's way quicker. Well, I would hope so if he's like 15 years younger. Well, even DeMar, his peak wasn't like, he wasn't a speed guy. DeMar was a precision guy. Amon's a speed guy. This guy's, he's kicking ass. So yeah. I just want to make sure that uh, at it, least... Big um, amen. I'm investing in my amen this offseason for sure. And we all, and 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 the people said amen. Amen. <laughs> um, <laughs> on this holy week, I should say. Uh third banana behind Wem Banana and uh Amen Thompson is probably going to be uh Brandon Miller. Yeah. Brandon Miller's really doing well there in Charlotte, hidden hidden at the league pass on the NBA league pass. So you never get to watch him. But I thought it was going to be Scoot Henderson, and Scoot's coming up a little bit, but not. Oh, uh, I don't know what you saw happen last night. What happened? Scoot, the Miami Heat blew out the Portland Trailblazers by sixty points. That's it. And Scoot Henderson posted the worst ever plus minus for a rookie at Is it good? M- minus fifty eight. Is that good? Good for bad, That's not good. good for good. But good for bad. So when people hear plus minus, what does that mean? Plus minus is kind of it's hard to explain plus minus to well, you brought it up. I know, I know. It's hard to explain. It's it's kind of the impact you have on the court. Um minus whether, 58, I'm looking at it yeah, right now. It's minus fifty eight. His so, impact was that bad. So what that means is like he may have scored twenty, which he did, but like there's other factors that like he let his other guy score yes. a bunch against him. Who scored a bunch against him? When you look at the Miami Heat, it doesn't look like they added up a ton of points, but they did. Adebayo with 21, Mills with 17, Rozier with 22. Boy, they didn't play uh, Jimmy. They didn't play Jimmy. Oh, yes, they did. Jimmy only had eight. Jimmy's been weird this year. Yeah. Hawkins had 12. Where's uh, Duncan Robinson? Thomas, Thomas Bryant had 26 points. No, who am I looking for? I'm looking for Hero. Where's Hero? Hero's I, been out. I need a Hero. Hero's been out for a while. He's been out basically the whole season. It's it, it's 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 honestly amazing what this team is doing with a subpar Jimmy year and Hero being out the whole year. Jaime has been a really good person for them, and Terry Rozier after a tough adjustment initially with the he he's really turned it on. Twenty three twenty four products is going to continue to stay up in value. We would love for you to come by the shop starting Wednesday. We'll like you to come every day, but Wednesday is when we're going to have some of these products, and we'd love to see you there. Okay, baseball. Best ball. Opening day is upon us. Nate, you can check out now because Nate does not watch baseball. At right, whoa, I got one more hype guy. One more pick. I just <laughs> I, went through I'm, the list. I'm legit telling you guys that can't see Nate. I'm watching him. He's got a hoodie on, and the guy has just been kind of staring at the wall. And I bet you were yeah. thinking, who can, who has lived up to the hype? Maybe two, actually. John Elway. In 84. Or, yeah, 84. He sure. played for Stanford, and he played baseball. And the options were baseball or football. And the Baltimore Colts or the Colts wanted him or something yep. like that. And then he said, no, I'm not going to play for you. I'm yep. going to play baseball. So they didn't draft him and ended up being the, the um, Broncos that picked him up. Uh, and then Bo Jackson. Bo out of Auburn was the Bo baseball man. and Heisman winner as well. Came out the gate. And I can't, I, the one that I remember, and it's because I've, been a Giants fan so long, but that was, I was 12 years old, 1989. Bo Jackson hits a home run off of Rick Rushel in the all-star game. And it went so far. I'll never forget it. It hit like the tarp part that was blocked off (laughs) in the stadium. And then there were people like jumping on the tarp to go run and grab that baseball that hit the tarp. You watch it on YouTube. It's unbelievable. Another thing that Bo Jackson did, he threw out Harold Reynolds from, I want to say it was left field. So Harold Reynolds was playing for the mm-hmm. Seattle Mariners at the time. Yeah. A ball goes, Bo picks up the ball and throws a laser from Pew. right field, left field, and hits him. I want to say it's left field. I'm just trying to remember. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, it, it was, was field. unbelievable on the fly. And Harold Reynolds is a fast dude. He was running from first, <clears throat> tagged him out at home plate. Bo Jackson 
just unbelievable. And by the way, I think you guys as um, 49ers experts and football experts, I believe they removed the tackle of this, the drop tackle, the hip drop, the hip, the hip drop. drop tackle. Yeah. They removed it this Had season. Big, we big. don't like. I hate. I hate it. That's what. Hate it. That's what destroyed Bo, Bo's career. I, I get it, but it's. It's it's another. Uh, I mean, this is a tangent. We don't need to do this. I, I, I it's, don't want to. It's just say. another. It's another thing to for the refs to control the game. Well, I feel like another another. Any time that a have. game can potentially ruin somebody's life in the sense of like that tackle. The, the tackle that we're speaking of is coming from behind and basically dropping all of your weight to drag the person down. Correct. Yes. Not a horse collar from the collar. No, it's no. just any yeah. time. That's why it's called the hip drop. You're grabbing them at the round, around the, the hips. Yeah. I don't, and then just basically going dead weight. Yeah. Okay. To try to trip up their feet. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I it's used to not play a real rugby. Tackle. I used to play rugby. So you, you tackle like that sometimes just any way to get a guy down. Really? That mm-hmm. isn't just smash. Cause you can't just smack someone in rugby. Right. Um, so I just, but it basically displaces the person's hip. But I mean, it's the NFL. Like it's football. There's give and take. I don't know. I don't know. There's Sorry. give and take. There's give it's and take. Football. Yeah. It's it's a it's a dangerous sport. They know what they signed up for, and I feel like I signed up to be able to. N- nobody thinks that at 26 years old, what they're going to be like at 60. If you ever want to see what somebody looks like at 60, go look at Joe Montana at a card show. You're okay. thinking oh, like a you're thinking like a normal guy. I'm thinking though. like a 46 year old yes, person. Yeah, you're yeah. thinking you like a thinking normal, in your 20s. These guys are like, these guys are like, I don't want to say inhuman, but the way they're built is just like crazy. It's just a they're superheroes. So it's I just don't a I don't have a ton of money. Okay, I personally don't have a ton of money. I'm okay, but I would give up every dollar I had, short of my wife and my son, to go back 20 years and be 20 years and have this knowledge and no money whatsoever to to go back 20 years because I can rebuild it. And knowing what I know now, I sure as heck would not want to put myself at risk, even if I was financially ahead. So when you think about this, these guys are making decisions at 23. You're you're 23. I bet you in five years, you're going to be sitting there going, oh, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? I think that every day. Yeah. <laughs> you do that every day. You're what, 25 or so? I don't even know. Okay, man. you're 20 something. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you guys are 40, your mindset's going to be different. Not that you're smarter. You just live longer to know more. And as seeing these players and working with these players, I physically work with these players and, you know, sign autographs with them and take them to events. And I watch their daily grind of what they went through. The whole like smell salt, go back in there. This is football. I'm telling you, some of these guys regret massively some of the decisions that they made for physically with their body that's not the game anymore though like we haven't seen the guys in this era at 60 years old you know we don't know what they're going to be like we don't know what yeah. medicine's going to change but i feel like that's a totally different conversation what? than uh the hip drop tackle is just i think it's too vague that's my issue mm-hmm. i think it's too vague of a rule another vague rule like pass interference where they try to define it and there's just this gray line here uh that's too big in between black and white that that messes up the game. I don't think that's one of the bad rules. I think one of the bad rules is what's going on with the quarterback. The g- gently touch them. Oh, the, you're gonna hit, the passer yeah, thing. Yeah. That kind of stuff too. is that's well, that's ridiculous. gone. I mean, that's you're grasping his straws. Right, that's not done. coming back. Yeah. And yeah. I also for the record, the all the headshots and stuff, I'm fine with, with trying to move away from that. But it's I mean, you gotta well, give and take. You know why they 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 did this rule, right, Emron? Tell me. It wasn't always about it's not safety's part of it. Sure. It's to get more points on the board. The NFL has noticed that the points have dropped off the last couple of years, gone down, I believe from 27 to about 21 last year per game, uh, per team. And they want to get more points. More offense means more viewership, more excitement, more Instagram moment plays. Well, then don't, well, then yeah. don't back up the extra point to the 20 yard line. Um, I love the, I want to say it's the XFL or one of the leagues. I just watched the kickoff, what they've done. They, Did they, you see it? They, they, they moved that. The NFL, no, that's, no, no. that's a this new is, thing now. But this is in another league that's trying something new. It was awesome. So what happens is mm-hmm. they haven't, we're supposed to be talking baseball, but let's just go for this because we're on a flow. Yeah. They have the guys lined up on a kickoff. Mm-hmm. They have the kick returner way, way in the back. They have the kicker coming up and kicking behind the line. So the guys are not taking a running start. The guys that are tackling and the guys that are defending the tackling on the kickoff are within 10 yards of each other. And nobody can move until after the receiver catches the ball. Yes. 
that's insane. It's so much better because nobody's getting a running start. Nobody's getting blasted. Nobody's like, it's actually defending and tackling and blocking mm -hmm. and you don't have the massive risk yeah. and you're actually going to get a run back versus these, because the kicker is kicking 20 yards behind the line yeah. where they're supposed to be kicking off from. I have some breaking news for you. And what? That's how, that's coming to the NFL. As of when? As of this week. That was one of the rules they put in at the meetings. That's for sure happening? Yes. It's on a trial basis, but yes. Oh, then they'll run that in preseason, but they won't run that regular season. It's supposed to be in the regular season, too. That'd be amazing. Yeah, they're bringing it to the Because NFL. then you, you're watching kickbacks. How many times do we know? 95% of the kickbacks. It was a 29 to 3 vote by the NFL owners. The only three teams to not vote for it were you guessed at the 49ers, the Raiders, and I forget who else. Because the Niners have a whole strategy when it comes to kickoffs. Let's finish today's show with baseball. We've got about uh, six minutes. I will tell you that baseball started off nicely. The Giants, 1-1, uh, lost one. Um, Matt Chapman hit two home runs what yesterday. A nuke that was into the into the brinks. Unbelievable. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, if the Giants can play right, let's hope that they get somewhere around 90 games wins. Game wins. Um, I'd be happy with that. We'll see, man. We'll I mean, see. We have the Dodgers doing what the Dodgers did spending-wise. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about were two prospects that we need to pay attention to in the game. One is in the MLB and one is just outside of it. The first one is Wyatt Langford, 22 years old. Amazing part about this kid. He plays for the Rangers defending World Series champions. This kid graduated. He played his last college baseball game. I believe he played for LSU. Played his last college baseball game 280 something days ago. And now he is in the majors and he was in the opening day roster yeah. at, and he only played 44 games in the minors. His first game, he gets his first big league hit as well as his first RBI. He's 22 years old. This kid is pretty awesome. Yeah. And super collectible for those of you that were buying 2023 Bowman draft, chasing the, the Photoshopped expos Tom Brady card. Mm -hmm. This Wyatt Langford rookie or Bowman's first is in this product. So it's real interesting because he's on opening days roster, meaning yeah. this is his, this is his rookie year. Mm -hmm. And his rookie year means he's this, he has rookie of the year contender opportunity. Here. Potential. Absolutely. Right. The second guy to pay attention to is Jackson holiday. We yes. all thought this kid for the Baltimore Orioles was going to be on the opening day roster. He did not make it. So what did he do in his first game in triple a first at bat? Smacks a lefty home run over the fence. Pow! This kid is unreal. Uh, Matt Holiday, the perennial all-star that played for both the A's and Rockies and, yep. and Cardinals. It's his son. This kid looks like he's about, if you look at his face, he looks like he's about 16 years old. He looks like a high schooler. Still. Yeah, but his body, he's like, oh, so, he's ripped. He's ripped. And this kid is unbelievable. Jackson Holiday, keep your eye on him. If you're investing in him, um, now's a good time to to put that money behind Jackson Holiday. Yep. All right. Don't forget, next week we'll be back. Enjoy your Easter. Thank you, Emil. Thank you, Nate, for being behind the window. Enjoy your Easter, everyone. Remember, True Sports Cards, both locations are closed tomorrow for Easter observance, but we'll be back to our regular hours on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody, and we'll see you next week here on the True Sports Card Show on Sacktown Sports 1140. Bye.